Tommy. God, I see you. Can you hear me? Can you I, see me? I can see you. I can hear you. You can you feel look me? Great, brother. Feel me. <laughs> ah, ah, it's a big man. Uh, All right, look, look at this old bearded rocker. Look at this maniac over here. <laughs> you, you only got about 9,000 CDs over there. <laughs> and the vinyl, of course. Oh, got to have the vinyl. Okay, great. Vinyl. Good. <laughs> Followed me through my life, you know, house to house, room to room. <laughs> cat, cat to cat. Yeah, how about it? It shows up yeah. for every one of them, man. <laughs> how are you, brother? I'm doing great, but I'm getting better by the minute, my friend. I am with the great Tommy Klufetis, uh, <laughs> one of the great drummers in the world today. Uh, drummer for Ozzy Osbourne for the past 10 years or so. Uh, and the uh, last guy to sit in with the original Black Sabbath guys on their final tour. Uh, before that, he played with Mitch Ryder, Alice Cooper, Ted Nugent, Rob Zombie, a uh, million things you've done in your life. Uh, Currently, the drummer. I've also backed an Elvis impersonator once. Really nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, currently, the drummer for the Dead Daisies, uh, but is also set to release the debut album from Tommy's Rock Trip, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Beat up by rock and roll this okay. Friday, May seventh, on Frontiers Records. Tommy, thanks so much, man. Hey. How you doing? How's your kitty cat? Did you feed your kitty cat? Did you change the litter box? <laughs> that I haven't done. I got to get out of that. <laughs> a lazy guy. I knew it. I could tell you just watching, <laughs> watching YouTube rock videos all day. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on. It, it'll be fun to talk a little rock and roll with what I see is a, a beat up by rock and roll guy. I can tell. <laughs> I have been beat up over the years yeah. by rock yeah. and roll, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I got it. I wrote it all about you. You should have been on the cover of my album. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that would be a first. Uh, <laughs> you know, Tommy's Rock Trip. What? What is this? One of the silver linings of COVID. Uh, what? When did you first get the feeling that you want to do a solo project? It could be a silver lining or a dark cloud, depending on what people think. Um, it, it, it's yeah, I guess it's because I was bored because I wasn't making music. And more than just being bored sounds horrible. Um, I had this block of time that I never had in my life where I wasn't on tour. I wasn't working for somebody else or in the midst of getting prepared to do something else where, you know, when I focus on something, I focus on that. And I usually don't do other things at the same time. So I've never been afforded the time to do my own music or even think about doing my music. I've never done it ever, ever before in my life. So, you know, the guys over there told, asked me if I wanted to make a record and I go, well, why not? I've never done it. And it'll kind of be like a little experiment and um, for myself to see if I can even do this, you know, if I think I'm such a hot shot. <laughs> um, so I said, why not? And I, I kind of took it as a challenge to see if I could write, if I could record, if I could put a band together, if I could, I'm going to say produce, cause I guess I did produce it, um, and write lyrics and do the whole shebang. So I was actually surprised myself and I, I can listen to the record without puking. So that's <laughs> a good sign. That is a good sign. Um, yeah. And I actually liked it. Uh, <laughs> didn't right. write, and I loved it. Uh, um, you hadn't written a damn song in your life before this, had you? I've never written a song in my life. No, well, I thought. And crazy. Yeah. That's a crazy thing. Um, what was the writing process like? Did you get somebody else to write with you, or? Uh, you know? Well, basically, I would. I don't. I don't play a melodic instrument, so there was a lot of me singing in this nasally clefetis voice that I have guitar parts or riffs or do this, put your hands here, no strum it this way. No, we're going to modulate here. No, we need something here. It was a lot of that right. of with a buddy guitar player of mine. And we just got in my little rehearsal studio and came up with a bunch of riffs that I liked. And then I put them together and then I made segues and they became songs. And then I wrote melodies and, then I wrote lyrics. I did it the only way I knew how to was to just go, yeah. you know. Very so it, it worked out for me. At least I was happy with it. And 
if I'm happy with it, that's really all I can ask for at the end of the day. If other people like it, then that's just a total plus. Yeah, and that's a great way to see it. Because all I set out to do was kind of make a cool, you know, I wanted to make a rock and roll record in the style that I enjoy, which I don't get to hear very often unless, or really play very often, unless I'm putting on an old record or something. So I wanted to do it in the way I wanted to do it. So for that reason, it's under my name, but it's really just a group of guys going in and jamming, you know, jamming my ideas, you know. And it has that cool vibe. Uh, you know, you got Tommy C playing saxophone on a record, uh, on a track. You got Doug Organ playing uh, Hammond B3. Uh, so that gives it a cool vibe, just the sax and the, and the Hammond B3. But like in the video for Got to Play Some Rock and Roll, uh, the new video that's out, you have clips, Jerry Lee Lewis, Chuck Berry, James Brown. Uh, this is, you know, Little Richard. These are all- And Hot rock- Chicks. Yeah, there you go. Of course. Yeah. Uh, but this is, you know, this is what this record is. It really encapsulates what you were trying to do, right? I mean, you're, it's a 50s roots rock and roll brought into today. I couldn't have said it better myself. I knew I liked you. I knew <laughs> you got it. Um, I mean, those guys to me are the greatest. You know, that's, that's, I tried to, aim to get that kind of they were stylists you know what i mean back then musicians were stylists all great bands have a style i want to play with a style that doesn't mean i'm on top of the musicians poles or anything like that that's not what motivates me i want to man that tommy there's not too many guys that play drums like tommy that's what i'm after you know whether you like it or not you know So music is kind of, it's a different thing than playing music to me. It's, it's a, it's a pride thing. And it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's a work ethic thing, how I play my music and what I put into my music is who I am. And, and it's kind of like, you know, the only more important thing in my life is being a dad and being a husband now. And those three things through music, it's taught me how to be a man through music. It's, it's taught me how to be a husband. It's taught me so much that when you put everything you have into it, it may take a while, but you will reap the rewards. So, and that, and it doesn't have to be music. It can be whatever you're interested in, but through applying myself and having relentless tenacity towards it, I've reaped the rewards of giving what I consider success back to me. Yeah, absolutely, man. The power of... That being said, I'm broke. Can I borrow 200 bucks? (laughs) Uh, I mean, you are like, you are the go-to guy for especially the live show. Um, You know, it's everybody picks you up to play live. You're just a, an incredible live drummer. Um, and I know I'm that- more noted as a live drummer. I don't know why not in the studio. I think, I mean, to me, the drums on this record are great rock and roll drums. And I think sometimes maybe when people see me play these hard rock gigs, they can't see me playing something else if that makes sense, or being a good studio drummer because they see me going over the top live. And it couldn't be further from the truth. And I'm not trying to say that I'm not a top, I don't really, I don't wanna be a top studio guy, to be honest with you, that's not what I do. Um, But I think that's part of the reason as I'm more noted that way is because I go 110% when I do something. You know what I mean? To me, when you play great rock and roll drums and you can keep a good steady backbeat and keep a beat, which a lot of drummers don't nowadays, um, that lends itself to many other styles. Yeah. Yeah. Is there is there another genre that you would want to play? You know, you're, you're known as a hard rock metal guy. Uh, that's what you do. Uh, for the most part, is there anything, you know, do you ever want to cut a jazz record or country record? No, I mean, I can play at other styles, but to me, rock and roll, I mean, I'm not heavy. I don't consider my drumming heavy metal at all. People may see me with double bass and, 
But if you if you look at what I'm doing, I'm very pretty basic, you know. Um, and they may see tattoos and and you know a skinnier guy and hair flying and sweat and this. And to them, that's heavy metal. But to me, that's just rock and roll. To me, it's Little Richard pounding on the keyboard and profusely sweating from intenseness. To me, they're one in the same. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, my kids would tell you, I, I used to put, put on Little Richard in the car when they were younger. And, you know, I'd play heavier, heavier stuff, you know. And I would say, you know, this Little Richard, you listen to that, it's not that far removed from thrash. You know, he was thrashing just with a piano and not a guitar. Well, it's it's intensity, you know what I mean? It is a vibrant intensity. It's in, it's intensity. It's it's the cadence of Chuck Berry's guitar. Look at Angus Young and the cadence of his guitar and and Elmore James. I I don't listen to real heavy music, but to me like you listen to Muddy Waters. And um, like the drummer on that stuff, he, I think his name is like Fred Bilo or something. And he's playing with brushes and it is so heavy. That is heavier than any heavy metal band. I'm here to tell you. So that's where I'm coming from. And that's the kind of drumming that I like. So to me, if you can play that kind of stuff, you can play anything because it's all based on that kind of stuff. Right, right. It is. And the only thing that I'm getting at is like sometimes what I've done, people don't get where I'm coming from because I've played with all these old guys. I've played with all the fifth. My dad had a group. We played with all these 50s and 60s guys. You know, I played jazz. My uncle was a jazz musician. I would play the New Orleans Jazz Fest every year from the time I was 12 years old for him. So I have a lot of other influences. That being said, I'm known I'm 110 percent when I play rock. So I'm fine with being pigeonholed. It's better than not being holed at all. You know? <laughs> this is true. This yeah, is true. I'd rather be a, a master of one than, uh, or a jack, uh, you know what I mean? Than, yeah, yeah, than yeah. average at a bunch of little things. Right, yeah. And you are the master for sure. Uh, it's crazy, you know, having seen you uh, play live is just, uh, it's an experience. Uh, it's so solid, mm -hmm. such a foundation. Uh, just beautifully done. Thank you very much. Um, you got a guy on this record that I have known throughout the years and listened to for a long time, Eric Dolan. Oh, now you're going to go kiss this guy's ass. <laughs> but, you know, how do, I, I, I wonder, because Eric's all over the place. You know, I, I got the Licorice Quartet stuff uh, recently, and, you know, I thought... Oh, this blows that crap out of the water. <laughs> But he's he's brilliant in the pop genre, man. I mean, those guys with Roger uh, and Jellyfish there and Licorice Quartet now, it's just brilliant, brilliant pop stuff. Um, and then Eric, goes, Eric is so talented. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Uh, it, 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 he just goes from that genuine, yeah. pure pop stuff to slash a snake pit he did. And now he's doing this stuff, which is, you know, kind of a 180 from that. Uh, yeah. Really? And you know why that is? Why it's is because that? he has, it's because he has talent. Yes, he does. That's it right there. It is. It is and that's cute. why I chose him to sing on the record because I knew he would, to me, when I hear the licorice, as much as he's great at that stuff, I think he's better singing hard rock. I mean, <laughs> He's 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 rocked to the bone. He screams some screams on this thing. And all I got to do is just go scream right here. And then it's done. You know what I mean? Where some guys, it would take like, uh, uh, you know, like 30 times to get the right timing of it. He's very talented. He has a very voice unto himself um, that you wouldn't really think is a hard rock voice, but it fits perfectly with my heavier music. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and he did a great he did a great job on it. It's, it's, was he the guy, you know, you wrote the songs and you said, where's Eric Dover? You know, <laughs> well, I was, and initially I was going to have maybe two or three singers, right? Mm -hmm. This is initially like, I didn't even know what I was going to do. And am I going to have like this guy play guitar? Do I call this guy and different bass player? What am I going to, you know, like, and then I go, no, 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 no. Everybody does this. 
special guest this and special guest that and this guy from this band and that guy from this band. And I go, I want to get one singer, one bass player, one guitar player and me and and make a band record, you know, so Eric can sing anything. So I called Eric up and he and he was happy to do it. And I'm very happy he did it. He did an excellent job for me. And I think from years to come, people are going to, if he ever plays it for somebody, they're going to go, damn, you sing your ass off. Cause there's not a lot of great rock singers out there. And he's one of them. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's fantastic. Uh, Yeah. What a great, addition to but the- back to me now damn it yeah <laughs> here you go no i'm 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 only serious <laughs> now you know back to you uh this is a very personal album for you obviously it's a solo album um but it's it's yeah you know, say, I, I it's just a rock record it's not even a solo album it's under my umbrella but it's just me and my buddies literally jamming live in a room and hitting play and recording like you're in your garage because we literally we literally did it in a barn. You did this, you did record this live. I mean it's it's you know 110% live. Ugh. We didn't wear headphones, we didn't do we didn't wear headphones, which is nuts. That is we literally the amps faced me. I listened to the amps, they listened to my drums, and I said, record one, two, three, and that's how we did it. Man, oh man, and, and it shows kind of it, it's a raw rock and roll record. Uh, yes, thank I, you. I really miss that. Uh, there's, you know, there's great productions out there and there's pristine sound and I appreciate that. But I also appreciate a little bit of flaw, a little bit of rawness, a little bit it, to, where it doesn't sound perfect. And Well, perfect really has no place in, in rock and roll. I mean, that's, it's not supposed to be perfect, you know? You know, it's like you see a you see a woman and maybe see what I think is beautiful. I I don't want these fake noses and fake this and perfect this where they're everybody start, you know. My wife, she's amazingly gorgeous, but she has a slight she's got freckles and this and that. And I go, she's gorgeous. She's unto herself, you yeah. know. Yeah. And look at me. I mean, I look like Brad Pitt. I'm kind of perfect, but you know. Well, yeah, what are you gonna do? No. Because <laughs> she likes my big schnoz. She's into it, so she must be nuts. It's a Detroit thing, man. She just likes yeah. the Detroit guy. And, you yeah. know. <laughs> and the Detroit but, thing. I mean, to me, rock and roll is not supposed to be perfect. It's like when we were cutting the record, and some of the guys were younger guys on the album, and they were a little too, oh, I made a mistake. Oh, I did this. Can I go fix this? I said, no, we're not. Once we get the take, I'm not fixing anything. If the vibe is there, then... That's the most important because then when you try to redo it, you can't get that same energy captured. Yeah. <laughs> so it's I just about capturing a vibe to me and and getting it to where, you know, you kind of go like, you know, somebody's driving their car and they, they're they just bobbing their head and they dig it and they're listening whether they know it or not and they're into it and it makes them feel good. Yeah. You know, that's as deep as, you know, music should get yeah. to me. I, I totally appreciate that. Totally. Um, no, but being on a, on a personal level, you have a song for your wife on this record. Uh, smile, right? It's called Honey, I Love You, You're My Everything, Pookie Wookie. It's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's a rock song, too, which is really cool. Yeah, which um, is even sexier. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Who so, writes rock, rock songs for their wife? <laughs> it doesn't happen too often. No. Uh, and you got your daughter make her, making her debut. I do. It's way yeah. cool. Way cool. Uh, the Power of Three, right? Yeah, The Power of Three is about my daughter and me and my wife having my daughter. And don't, it's not a little pretty song either. It's still okay. a rock and roll song. It's a rock and roll nursery song to my four year old because I love her so much. Um, and on that record, you mentioned a saxophone. I'm playing drums. I sing that song. My daughter's on it. And also, her grandfather, Tommy C., is my dad, <coughs> plays sax on it. So there's three generations of Clefetis ending the record. And I did the record just for that moment right there. That, that's incredible. It's a, it's a great song. It's a, it's a 50s rock and roller kind of thing. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's a definite Chuck Berry ripoff song. I ripped off <laughs> Chuck the best I could. 
yeah, and that opening riff and everything. It's it's yeah. so cool. But the, you know, the the lyrics are great. I'm not a big lyric guy, but lyrics for this song are fantastic. What are words? You know, what are words? <laughs> but it, it it's so cool. Uh, to, you know, to have that family thing going and that personal uh, tilt to. Well, it. my dad is a musician, and we 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 are so close. You know, I don't really care what outside, it never affects me, you know, to read internet stuff or, or fans say this, it doesn't really come into my universe. There's, I have a very small world that I care about what they think. And me and my dad share a bond through music that I go to my dad when I need to talk something through, or how was that show? Or how did that sound? If, if he says it's cool, it's cool. If he says, well, maybe this and then maybe I need to rethink it, you know. So I have a few people and my wife's the same like that. She's very musical, even though she's too shy to do it. Um, so it's it's in the blood <laughs> and music. You can develop a, a bond. You know, me, my uncle and my dad were all musicians. And we kind of had this trifecta bond through music that is it's past father and son, yeah. you know, because of the music. That's yeah, it's it's great. It is really special. Uh, did you try to get your wife on this record? No, she no, she wouldn't do it. I I thought about it. I wanted to have a singer her sing a song, but it's too much work with her. She's too shy. Yeah. Even though I have heard her sing, she went upstairs and she recorded a a version of Imagine, and I didn't know she could sing at all. And yeah. she was upstairs. You know, she's full time mom all the time. And she go, honey, I just need a break. She went up and she sang this version of Imagine, which Imagine has done eight million times. <clears throat> and then she came down and she played with, with me. And I'm like, is that you? I could not believe how beautiful it was. But then if you if you have to watch her and do it, she she freezes up. So she's no good to me. <laughs> Well, that's cool. You got to put her in a room by herself. And, and right, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, you, you, your dad, uh, a big guy that pushed you really hard, uh, huge influence in your life, uh, musically, personally. I know that. Um, but you've played with a lot of guys when, you, you know, being a very young guy, you played with a lot of guys that have seen the business uh know what they're doing uh you know alice cooper ted nugent that kind of thing mitch Ryder. um right which did you learn the most from what who, who had the greatest impact on you musically uh, and personally other than my father because i would put my my dad at the top which your dad your parents should be at the top Definitely. you know i really connected with ted nugent we're from the same area of course but i think you know politics aside which that's always the norm the first thing anybody's going to say about ted you can't take away the great music that he's made and his tenacity for it and i appreciate that i'm still in contact with ted in fact he, he saw the um video and the first tune that came out for the album and he called me right away he like 6 30 in the morning are you or six? Are you up? And of course I'm up <laughs> because I'm I'm always up. And and he goes, Are you up? Call me. And and we chatted for an hour about it and he really dug it. So I mean, not everybody's gonna do that, you know, because what does he care about my music? But he he dug it and he called me and he told me. So I appreciate that. Right. I you know, I really and and as different as an Ozzy Osbourne is. They're very similar in their approach to it. You know what I mean? You know, Ozzy's very professional. He's all about the show. And he's, he's very, very, very extra clever than you would catch on. Or than he lets on. Yeah. Which makes him double clever, if you know what I mean. <laughs> totally. You know, I, so, I, you know I, I've learned that people don't have to tell you, do it this way, do it this way to learn if you're open to things and you're a clever young sponge like I what I consider myself I would just watch and I watched all these years and I've watched and I've picked up and I watched and I've done gigs 
and I've been in every kind of gig situation from a wedding to a hot dog stand, to a pizzeria, to an arena, to a stadium, right. to a station wagon, to a bus, to, you know, and then, and literally everything that you can think of every level I've inched, inched, inched like a worm going to the, it was never this for me. It's always been, Oh shit. When am I going to get a break? Oh shit. When am I going to get a break? And then suddenly you get somewhere. Um, and those guys had that too. You know what I mean? They, it, it, it's enduring this business and being a survivor is what it's about to me, you know, cause anybody can have a quick run of success, you know? Right. Oh, these guys have lasted, and I think that's why. They've lasted, and there's no mistake. While Ozzy's still making great records, and people want to go see him in these big arenas, and why Sabbath, their music lives on, and it's legendary, because it's great. Just like I said, why can Eric Dover do this? He's talented. Now, these guys, you can't argue with their success, and you can't argue with how professional and how serious they still take it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's their life. Uh, and, and they put everything into it and I so appreciate it. Uh, it, it. What's the toughest gig you've ever had? Playing for my dad. <laughs> yeah. That's, he uh, was the toughest boss I've ever had. So wow. he prepared me for everything down the line. That's crazy. Yeah. That, that's cool. Um, you played the Sabbath gig. Um, you didn't play the, the album. Uh, Ozzy, you played. Thanks for uh, pointing that out. <laughs> but, you know, I and mean, people are, are asking this. You know, you, you're not on. Ask the away. I, it doesn't bother me. Go ahead. No, and I didn't think it would. Uh, you're very confident with who you are. And, and you know, people, we all love you out here. Um, Ask away, amigo. You know, do, do you see yourself recording with Ozzy in the future, maybe a, 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 on a record? Um, I mean, he's making an, an album right now and I'm not on it. Who knows if he'll do another one, but that's just way the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. You know, you know, he has a producer who's got all his guys lined up that he's comfortable working with. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. So what are you going to do, you know? And I'm totally fine with it because it's it says Ozzy Osbourne and he's making a record and it's it's the way he chooses to do it. So and they've made a great album before and I knew they're doing another one right now. Yeah. yeah. But I don't get really bent out of shape. Maybe if I was younger, I would. But, you know, it, it all works out in the end, you know. And, you know, I, I'm pretty sure we'll probably see you on the Ozzy tour. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, anytime Ozzy asks me to play for him, I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we can't wait for that. Uh, that's way cool. Because you can't do everything, you know what I mean? I've figured that out. And I figured out when things don't happen, usually it may take years to come around and you go, oh, there's a reason that didn't happen. You know, that wasn't the right thing for me or that or I wasn't the right thing for that. Right. And you just kind of got to, you know, go with what comes up at the time. Yeah. I mean, and, and you continue to work hard uh, and, and and people see that and they they pick up on that. And, you know, they want somebody that works hard. Uh, you'll you'll be successful. Well, you got, you're working hard is not enough. You've also got to be talented and you got to be yeah. the right guy. And you have to have the right mind and you have to have the right attitude. You know, there's all these different things that come into play when fans start or somebody wants somebody or things work out or they don't work out. Yeah. So I kind of, it's just either meant to be or it's not to be, whether it's playing live or playing in the studio with people. You know, there's been numerous bands that, when I was younger, maybe you wanted to be in and you tried and it didn't work out. You go, thank God that didn't happen because I would have gone down this road, right. which wouldn't have led me where I'm at right now. Yep. Yep. Uh, and, and it took 20 years to realize, oh, thank God I didn't go there because I would have been much worse off if that opportunity had happened. You know, right. it right. wasn't meant to be. Yep. Uh, that's, that's in a good in a good way yeah yeah and that's that's life in general man you know if you leave five minutes early life is going to be different 
you know, yeah, right. yeah. just the way it is. Let's not get too deep, Scott. <laughs> Um, now you've, I mean, you, people look at sa the Sabbath gig, especially, uh, you know, Rob Zombie, Alice Cooper, all these high profile gigs, they're dream gigs for so many people, um, including yourself. They're dream, they're dream gigs for me. Right, right. Um, is there, is there any other band that you, you know, I hear uh, like an ACDC influence on the title track here and I, I couldn't help but think to myself, man, if he was in that band, <laughs> uh, is there an, a, another big high-profile I mean, dream I, gig that you have? It's fun. I, I mean, I love ACDC. I love ACDC, and I love that style. You know, it, it, it harkens back to what I'm talking about, Chuck Berry and Little right. Richard. And, and I mean, I love that music, and I love that drumming. And to me, it's even though they're not American, they're as American as you can be. It's it's rock and roll, baby. Yeah, sure I love ACDC. I love Aerosmith. I really love Bob Seger. Um, I'm a huge fan of Bob Seger. I'd love to play for Bob Seger. Um, there's so much great music that I have a lot of years left. So yes, you do. So I'll, th there'll be a lot more coming down the pipeline. Yeah, I can't wait to see it, man. I'm too far into it now, too. I can't quit. <laughs> Musicians never quit, man. That's one thing no, I remember. They just, they just die. <laughs> they just die. You don't yeah. ever retire, man. It just no. doesn't happen. Um, don't even try it. Um, touring. Uh, I know you got some dates with um, the Dead Daisies, which is super right. cool. Coming right. come close to the Chicago area here. I, I'm hoping to catch you there. Uh, Where are we playing towards you? Well, uh, you're playing in Indiana and you're playing okay. um, an Illinois date. And I can't remember. I just looked at it. Um, I mean, is there anywhere driving distance? If you want to come out, you're all taken care of. No problem. Oh, man. I love it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, and I'm a photographer as well. So you'll have photos. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, I everything's driving distance you know i i usually put a six hour limit uh so oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's it's elvis rough. better come oh, back to the dead for me to get in my car and drive six hours to the <laughs> and i'm an old guy you're not old yeah. yet yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah no I, i'll i'm gonna come see you it's just a matter right, yeah. of you know whether i have you know family stuff to do or you know some kind of you know emergency thing but you know, I'll, I will plan on, on, you got, you, you got it. Man, All good. I, I love seeing you. You're, you're incredible. Um, have you seen any concerts that I've played before? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, Sabbath for sure. Oh, okay. How, how could I miss that? Uh, in Chicago, in Chicago. Yeah. Which one at the, at the, they used to call it the world theater. I don't yeah. know what it's called. Yep. That was it. Uh, what yeah. It called? That first Midwest bank amphitheater or something like oh, that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I played there on an oldie show with my dad when I was about twelve. Really, it was called the World Amphitheater. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, World yeah, yeah. Music Theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what it was. Yeah. Yep. yep. Wow. That was like Man. where this was like. I mean, at the big time, there was maybe two thousand people there in a twenty thousand seater or something like that. But I just remember seeing all the seats and the yellow and the black seat, which they're still yellow and black, right? Uh, I don't think that I don't think the top level was there back then. Isn't there like a yeah, top level now? Sky box is like yeah. yeah, I don't think they had that back then. Okay, yeah, probably not. Those are pretty. Yeah. Cool, I think. Uh, yeah, how do you remember this stuff, man? I mean, I remember I because I don't do drugs and I don't drink and I don't smoke and I have a together brain, half half together brain. Yeah, uh, like to. But I re I I can't so. remember a combination locker. I can't remember what I ate, but I can remember gigs. And I, once I learn a song, I can remember that song for the rest of my life. Like if I had to go play a gig with Ted Nugent, I haven't played with Ted in 20 something years. I could do it. No problem. Wow. Or Alice or any band. There's just something. Cause I go over it so many times that it's, it's stuck in there, yeah. but uh anything else it's horrible. <laughs> uh you know hey it's, it's no drugs no drink uh stay yeah but but some guys still are good like that like and they've done True. tons of drugs and they drink so i don't True. i don't know i don't it, i don't how do you do that i don't i don't <laughs> i mean that's crazy 
Uh, yeah, I just can't. Each their own. It's not my thing. But I just because I've seen people who they tell me about their their troubled times, but they're still sharp. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I don't. Know. I mean, you look at the stones; they're still pretty sharp. I mean, yeah. Keith is still sharp, and Mick Mick Jagger. I mean, God. Yep. I, they're I, animals. I saw them, you know, the year before last, and I I couldn't I couldn't even. It's unbelievable. Really it's unbelievable. It, it really is. Uh, all those years of doing just the music alone. Uh, you know, and touring can wear you down, obviously. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and the drugs and everything for so long. Uh, yeah. Wow. Great. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, is that the only time? Are you going to try to tour this record? We. I'll see what happens. I don't have any plans right now because the world's so bizarre. Okay. But I wouldn't be against going out and doing some gigs because I think the music really lends itself to live performance. It is a live performance. Right? It is a lot, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's way cool. Uh, Tommy, man, I can't thank you enough for your time. It's been an honor. Hey, uh, it's my absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. I look forward to seeing you whenever I come close in your six hour vicinity. <laughs> and uh, totally, thank you so much. Stay healthy, man. Did you get Absolutely. your vaccine? Oh, I did. Second dose oh, did? two weeks ago, three weeks ago now, and uh. I I just got my second one yesterday. So, oh, oh, well, the day before yesterday, I, w I felt goofy after the second one. Yeah, yeah. But, but now I'm good. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, you look great, man. You, you sound great. Uh, can't wait to see you. Thank gonna... you so much. Thank you, everybody out there. I really appreciate it. And all my best to everybody. Yep. Tommy's Rock Trip, Beat Up by Rock and Roll, this Friday, May 7th on Frontiers. Coming to see you. I can't wait to see you, man. Great, man. God bless you. See you. All right. You too, man.